Rodney, I'm pretty excited about what I'm seeing with the Cabernet, Lakes Folly Cabernet you've got on the on the table here. I noticed the vintage is 1991. Mm. Yeah. So um, thank you very much for bringing out one of your older oh, wines. What, and why? Uh, I know I'm special, but um, <laughs> I'm sure there's another reason why you brought out such an <laughs> yeah, old vintage. Well, look, I mean, um, I think our wines drink okay when they're young wines but really lakes folly wines are best drunk as as aged wines and most of our customers i i think with the reds especially the chardonnay they tend to drink at varying times but with the reds i would say probably 80 percent of the time people would hang on to those wines and drink them at 10 plus years of age and uh, and they just go into that next phase of development where they lose a little bit of that sort of primary fruit character but they pick up all that lovely bottle aged secondary sort of characters of earthy leathery sort of character hunter character and and um you know just a really lovely savoriness that that, that sort of goes with them well let's have a look yeah please show me um, i think that um i find it amazing when one of the one of the unique things that uh i find when i drink older wines is is thinking about how old that wine is and that there's a there's a, there's a food stuff in in bottle that has last so many decades mm. Mm. Um, so when when you're making these terrific wines, how do you how do you build wines to last this long? Oh, I think it, it again. It, it you know I, I keep harping on about the vineyard, but it does. It really gets back to the vineyard, and the wine making process itself is really quite simple. Um, we um, there, there's no you know smoke and mirrors. There's no great tricks associated with it. Uh, it's it's very gentle, a very very um, hands on approach. So. We'll, we hand pick all the fruit, and at that time we'll go out and, and, and select what doesn't make the grade. So we'll go through, if we were picking tomorrow, we would go out today and take anything off the vine that wasn't, we deemed not worthy to, to, to come in, in the fruit tomorrow. Um, and then tomorrow, the next day when we would pick, uh, we, I would have one of my guys stationed on the back of the tractor. We hand pick into 44 gallon drums, wow. uh, which went out with the horse and cart, but we still use it. And, uh, but the beauty of that is that there's not a lot of compaction of the fruit and, uh, and you, you're, you're bucketing into these so someone can be stationed on the back to again look for anything that shouldn't be in there. And, uh, and then we, 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 we crush, uh, it's a very old gentle crusher that we use, into big open vats where we hand plunge the fruit then, we, we, we inoculate with yeast and we, we hand plunge for the next six or seven days. And, um, and that's, that means getting up at all hours to, to hand plunge every you know, four, six hours. Um, and then at the completion of fermentation, we bucket, we hand bucket into an airbag press. Uh, and then from there, it, it gravity flows down into these big old casts that are around here. So when, when it's in the airbag press, what, what are you doing there? You're separating the skins from the, from the wine? Yep. Yep. yep, just separating the skin from the wines. And then it comes down here and uh, goes into these big casks. And that's when it goes through that, all reds usually go through that, that secondary process of malolactic fermentation. Now I'm, I'm very jealous, and we'll get to malolactic fermentation in a minute, but I'm very jealous. I look around this room and there is just big casks everywhere, mm. and uh, it's something that I don't have in my winery. <laughs> um, what's the uniqueness of, of the uh, of big cask winemaking? I don't know. I mean, I think it's a subtler uh, type of oak. I mean, oak, oak contribution comes from you know the, the amount of liquid to, to oak ratio so therefore if you have bigger casts well it just stands to reason that you don't get as much oak pickup right, or like oak a surface area type yeah, ratio yeah. yeah okay so um there's other benefits as well they they seem to go through that process of malo better in the big wood it's a subtler more gentle way of of maturing the wines that said they're only in the big wood for about six months and then we shoot them into small barriques 225 right. litre barriques for around about 12 months Wow, all okay. French. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of maturation. Now, so ma malolactic fermentation is that process where the bacteria convert one type of acid to a hard yeah. type of acid to a softer type of acid. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's something that can be done for stability or to en enhance the character of the wine. That's it. What do you do it for? Why, why do you do In it? In the case of the reds, it's done from a stability point of view. Yeah. Um, with Chardonnay, if it is done, it's more done from a, from a, a sensory perspective. Right. Going back on that Chardonnay, that character that we get from male lactic fermentation. That's butterscotchy. Butterscotchy yeah, character. Yeah, diacetyl yeah. butterscotch character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which, okay. which, you know, I mean, people either like or they dislike, but I, I think it's a great complexing um, character to have. That said, our wines historically don't have any any uh, any malolactic influence in them, so yeah. in the Chardonnay. So. Right. 
<clears throat> um, this is this wine's terrific. Yeah, it's Back holding up pretty well for 19 years. It's yeah. absolutely fantastic. It's got so much fruit on the palate. It's, mm. it's quite amazing. I've, you, you mentioned like mushroomy and earthy notes, um, mm. but this is all, as well as those notes. It, it, it does have um, some fruit character to it. Yeah, and it's the the thing with um, with Hunter wines in their truest form is historically they're quite low in alcohol, and I think that. That, that lightness of alcohol is what, in part, gives them such great longevity. They're more elegant, finer styles. They're more European in style. They're not, you know, the, the, the modern day red wines of 15, 16, 17% alcohol. Mm. What's the alcohol of this one, Ronnie? Uh, 12. 12% <clears throat> alcohol Cabernet. Yeah. And, and generally in Australia, we're seeing so much more, and particularly with global warming, we've seen Cabernets getting up to 14, 14 and a half percent. Mm. And um, really, um, so, you, you, and I do believe this as well, but you, you, you believe that these, these wines don't age as well as some of the oh, lower no. alcohol wines? No, no. I, don't, I, I don't think there's any chance. Mm. Um, I think all winemaking, all good winemaking, gets down to one fundamental word, and that's balance. Mm. And if you can create a wine that has good natural balance, um, then you're home and hosed. Mm. And it doesn't equate to have a good natural balanced wine at 17% alcohol. No. You know. <laughs> no. So, you know. You, You've I got mean, a solvent in the wine, really. I'm you? not saying it's got to be 12. I mean, that it, you may get that, that, that balance at 13 or even 14%, or you may get it at 11%, and it's subject to the area and the wine and, and those sort of things. But it does get down to that, that, that one key word of balance. Mm. So, mm. yeah. Well, it has a, the, the, the palate's terrific, and the tannins are just so, they're so vibrant and alive. Um, mm. and, uh, it's looking good, actually. <laughs> it's fantastic. Well, great great food wines. <clears throat> it's great food wine. wines. Because the, 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 um, those bigger, richer wines, they might be appealing in the glass initially, but when you have them with, with, with food, oftentimes they'll, they'll, you know, they'll, make, they'll, they'll overpower the food. So these, these styles of wine are terrific food wines. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you.